On the cold, frosty and clear morning of Thursday 5th March 1908, Joseph Hume was put to the gallows at Inverness Prison, the last man to be hanged in the town. Hume had been condemned to death for the murder of 48-year-old John Barclay Smith of Flanbride, a road contractor and blacksmith. Early in the morning of Sunday 29th September 1907, a strong smell emanated from one of the rooms of a cottage situated in Flanbride, near Elgin in Murray. The smell aroused suspicion of other people living in the flatted property. The room belonged to Smith, but he had not been seen since the previous Tuesday. Police were contacted and when they arrived, they forced open the door. They made a gruesome discovery. Smith lay on the bed, partially undressed, with extensive injuries to the left side of his head and his face. On a nearby table were three empty spirits and beer bottles, and close by on the floor lay Smith's mash hammer, covered in blood. This was undoubtedly a murder scene, but there was no evidence of a struggle. The only sign of damage was to the head of the bedstead. It had been smashed as though whoever the perpetrator was had missed the man's head and hit it instead. From what police saw, it was thought the murder had taken place three or four days before the body had been discovered. There was little for the police to go on. No clues had been left and nothing seemed out of place, although Smith's watch and a few other articles were missing. There also appeared to be no motive for the killing. Witnesses came forward, stating they'd seen Smith in the company of someone who looked like a vagrant, as he was dressed shabbily earlier in the week. So police followed up this lead. Soon, an arrest warrant was issued for Joseph Hume, who was known to have been in the area and in Smith's company. However, the warrant wasn't executed until Wednesday 23rd October, when Hume was found by Stirling Police. He'd been staying in a lodging house in St Mary's Wind in the town, where he had given his name as Joseph Middleton, but had moved to another one in St John Street. At 9.25 that evening, while in St John Street, he was arrested by Sergeant George Gilmore and taken to the Borough Police Office. Hume's trial at the High Court in Aberdeen took place in early February 1908 and lasted two days. But most of the evidence was circumstantial, with the most damning piece being that he was seen in the company of Smith a couple of days before his demise. It was also proved that a watch Hume had pawned had also belonged to the dead man. He claimed that he had an alibi for the time of the murder, that he was in Edinburgh, but the jury never believed him, and after an hour they returned the verdict of guilty. Lord Kincaid Mackenzie passed the sentence of death on him. His execution was to take place on 5th March inside Inverness Prison. Several petitions for a reprieve were prepared and it was genuinely believed the Secretary of State for Scotland, John Sinclair, would commute it to a life sentence. On Thursday 27th February, the matter was raised in Parliament by J. Annan Bryce, the Member of Parliament for Inverness Boroughs. He explained that one of the petitions had been signed by 4,000 people, one-sixth of the population of Inverness. Sinclair told him he did indeed have the petition and that it was now under anxious consideration. When March dawned, the petitioners feared the worst and it transpired their efforts would be in vain. On Saturday 28th February, Hume's father, mother and other relatives visited him in prison. At one point, his brother James 
asked to have his pipe as a memento, but the prison refused, as the pipe, they said, had belonged to Smith. His mother, however, did get something. A Bible had been sent to him by someone, and she requested to be given this as a keepsake. There was no issue with this request, as it wasn't included in the inventory, for at the time it was custom to destroy all the prisoner's belongings after his death. On Wednesday 4th March, it was announced the Secretary of State had denied the plea for clemency. The news was broken to Hume by the prison chaplain, the Reverend Gavin Lang. Late in the evening of the 4th, Hume continued to protest his innocence to the chaplain. From the time of his arrest, he had always protested his innocence, stating that he'd never seen Elgin, let alone Flan Bride, in his life and he continued in this vein on the eve of his execution. The two men had then conversed for quite some time about the scriptures. He then spent the rest of the evening writing letters to his mother and brother, who both lived in Edinburgh. He also wrote to other relatives and friends, as well as his girlfriend, 23-year-old Mary Armstrong, in Edinburgh, reiterating his innocence and protesting against his sentence. That night, Hume managed a restful sleep until around four o'clock. Then he rose at six and ate breakfast. Although a bit agitated, Hume was fairly calm about the whole thing. A few minutes before eight, however, the officials entered his cell. These included the minister, the Reverend Lang, Bailey's Bernie and Mackenzie, the prison surgeon Dr Murray, Andrew MacDonald, the Sheriff Clark, the Governor of the prison, Mr Nicholl, Chief Constable MacDonald, the Town Clerk Deputy George Smith Lane and the Borough Surveyor, T.H. Scott. The Minister asked Hume, an ex-soldier, if he had any last confession to make, but Hume standing soldier-like, replied, No, sir, I have nothing to confess. The executioner, Henry Pierpoint, then pinioned the condemned man, and the procession to the scaffold began, with the Reverend Lang heading the way. When Hume saw the scaffold, he faltered. He was assisted to it and helped up the steps. His final words were, Goodbye, Father, and Don't blindfold me. He then seemed to faint, and the execution took place immediately. Soon afterwards, Dr Murray confirmed his death and said it had been quick and painless. Hume was 25 years old. He was buried along with his belongings in the prison courtyard. The black flag was hung at half-mast, but in a departure from custom, the bell wasn't rung. His execution was the first in 70 years in the town, and it would be the last. No more capital punishments were carried out at Inverness ever again. <laughs>